Hi everyone. Today I'm going to talk about herd immunity. Here are four parts of the presentation. First is news and debate. Second is theories. Third is implementation, and finally is our suggestions. First, let's talk about our news. In 2014, the United States experienced a record number of measles cases, with 644 cases from 27 states, which is the greatest number since 2000. This issue raised the question whether vaccination against epidemic disease ought to be mandatory. Rand Paul, Republican senator, believes it should be voluntary by saying. The state doesn't own your children; parents own the children, and it is an issue of freedom. His words caused debates on whether vaccination on epidemic disease should be mandatory or voluntary. So, why should immunization be mandatory? Firstly, herd immunity is a classic public good, which can keep certain dangerous diseases at bay and benefit future generations. For example, the success of the smallpox vaccine. Secondly, through immunization, a person not only avoids contracting the disease himself, but also prevents spreading the disease to others. Thirdly, encouraging healthy children to receive vaccination can protect other children who fail to respond to vaccines due to weak immune systems. Overall, supporters believe that compulsory vaccinations are justified, since they protect public health in the present and future. Then, why people think immunization should be voluntary? Firstly, they argue that human beings should have the fundamental right to decide what they put in their bodies. Secondly, vaccines may have side effects. After understanding the possible severe effects of vaccination on their children, some parents refuse to take the risk to vaccinate. Thirdly, some people may follow certain religions that oppose vaccination mandates. Finally, if most people are vaccinated in a community, those who are not vaccinated will still enjoy protection. Overall, opponents of compulsory immunization do not believe it is their social responsibility to protect the public health, and they value more on their individual right and freedom. Theories can explain these issues as externality, government behavior, and individual behavior. When market is sufficient, the supply curve equal to the demand curve. Social benefits equal to private benefits. However, vaccination is a public good. If vaccination coverage reaches at a certain level, let's say 80%, the whole society will be away from the disease. Then, new equilibrium is an efficient outcome. Social benefits are higher than the private benefits. Even if some people don't get the vaccination, they can still enjoy the social outcome without any contribution. Then, there will be a dead weight social loss caused by market failure. This phenomenon can also caused by the free rider problem. Let others pay, while you enjoy the benefits. Voluntary vaccination creates a free rider problem because people are selfish. They assume that if others take the vaccination, they could enjoy the outcome without the risk of side effect. However, if it become a common knowledge, finally no one have an incentive to pay the cost and benefit the most. Because of the free rider problem, it's hard to keep the vaccination coverage high enough to avoid the disease. So government intervention and mandatory vaccination are necessary. Let's look at government behavior. When government is thinking whether to make vaccination a compulsory policy, they will compare the policy gain and loss. The government will compare the market equilibrium and social optimal. Assume the probability for people to take vaccine is p. For a society, the loss comes from two parts. One is from p percent people who are vaccinated; they have possibility to die of the side effect. For the rest of one minus p percent who didn't take vaccinations, after infection, some of them die. 
government wants to minimize the whole loss of the disease. For an individual, he will compare the cost and benefit. An individual has two options, to take vaccine now or delay it. In equilibrium, he wants to make the payoff of taking vaccine EVIC and the payoff of delaying the vaccine the same. Finally, we got the figures showing immunization rates in the individual equilibrium and social optimal. Clearly, there is a huge gap between the voluntary vaccination and social optimal. It shows that market cannot make it good enough. Now, let's introduce some further vaccination implementation in the world. In response to the challenge in global immunization, WHO and UNICEF developed the Global Immunization Vision and Strategy. Take measles vaccine as an example. After nearly a decade of hard working, in 2014, about 85% of the world's children received one dose of measles vaccine. Only four countries' coverage were below 50%. Compared to the data from 2000 to 2014, the number of annually reported measles cases worldwide decreased by 69% from about 85,000 to 26,000, and measles incidence decreased by 73% from 146 to 40 cases per million population. The achievement of vaccination really changed people's lives. Since then, Many governments take measures to encourage vaccination. For example, in Australia, there is a payment for medical practice that achieves more than 90% coverage of children below 7 years old. Also, a recommendation to develop uniform vaccination requirements for school entry. In Europe, ministers called on a national governments to create vaccination programs with lifelong approach. In USA, California and Vermont passed laws this year eliminating exemptions in 2016. Finally, we will propose some suggestions to help more people accept mandatory vaccine and benefit the most. We mainly focus on three parts, public communication, limit exemptions, and framing of vaccination choice. Firstly, public communication. It is essential that vaccination programs should be clear and accurate between health officials and the public. Wrong messages will create a significant gap between communicators and audience. Scientists should explain the knowledge sufficiently to the public, and the media should focus more on the correct information rather than risk only. This will let public trust more on governments. The limit exemptions. On one hand, avoiding loss of herd immunity, government should refuse religious exemptions because it is likely to cause ethnic conflict only to diverse treatments to religious. On the other hand, medical exemptions are acceptable within a limit. Finally, we explore the framing of vaccination choice based on the behavior economics. Governments make vaccination the default choice for parents. When parents reject the vaccination, they will receive a list of losses for children without vaccination. The loss of words may allow parents to withdraw fielding forms of not taking vaccinations. That's all. Thank you for listening.